What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's gonna be part two. If you can't notice that this is where we left off last time. Uh, this is part two of old Greg's new engine. And basically today, I am hoping to get a lot of this done. First things first, we're gonna pull the trans. Uh, not a real big fan of how this thing tilts with the trans on it, and I need to get to the rear main seal anyway, so that's gonna have to come off. Uh, <clears throat> this isn't really a how to video series, like I said in the part one, and I haven't even posted that as of recording this yet. I still need to upload that. I've edited it, but I need to upload it. Um, by the time you see this, it'll be uploaded. Maybe you saw that, I don't know. But uh, this isn't necessarily a how-to, but I am kinda gonna show you what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it. Um, trans is gonna come off so that we can get to the rear main seal. We may or may not open up the timing cover and look at the chain. Uh, we're gonna pull this off, AC compressor. We're gonna pull this off, the power steering. Um, largely, we're gonna try and mess with this while it's off the motor. I know it's gonna be some weirdness when I finally pull the motor out of old Greg to try and like preserve the charge that's in there I'm gonna try and like dissect the stuff off of it before the motor comes out if I can in order to keep what's in there in there so that I don't have to worry about it plus this power steering pump took a dump at some point uh, I don't know if this worked or not I know that works um, I'm pretty sure this alternator works because I did get it running when it was in the other car before I started taking everything apart. So that might stay. And then we're going to do the front main here, which funny enough, that actually looks kind of fresh. I know you see all the goopy RTV. That was me. Wasn't really, wasn't really sure how much I should have used on it because I, I, I didn't Google anything and I forgot that Mark IV had the, uh, didn't have the actual gasket. Whatever. You, you live and you learn. The motor ran either way and it held oil without leaking, so that was the important part. Uh, so I guess we're just going to kind of get into it. I'm going to cut here. Uh, I'm going to set you back up so that you can be on this side and I might be able to show you something. Alright, so we're back. I'm going to go ahead and pull the starter off first. That's this piece here, if you're not familiar with cars. Use the handy dandy impact to make a bunch of racket for y'all. But, if I'm not mistaken, you can actually leave this on and pull the trans with it. I just don't want to because it's just extra weight. And I'm not, I'm not planning on using this starter on old Greg, even though I know it's a good starter. Um, I just, I just don't want to, but those two, and then a little bit of something, and you'll pop that right on out. You know, that's funny. That could be a stock clutch, but it might not be a stock clutch. Uh, I have a wrench that I use. Be right back. Anyway, this is what it is. It's a... Maco, I don't know if I can get that to focus. So it's Maco. One side of it's 18, and then the other side is a 16. If I can get that to, if I can get that to focus. There we go, 16. So it's a it's a 16 and an 18, and it's actually really convenient for Mark threes and fours because a lot of these are 16s and 18s. So we're gonna need to go lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, which means I'm gonna be lifting. I've never had a VR on a stand before, so I'm gonna gently do this and try to be as smooth as I can. I don't wanna piss this thing off and have the stand give up life or something stupid like that. But if there's a will, there's a way, and we have a will, so we're gonna find a way. That's right. Uh, I 
need a 13 so that I can take a decent nut right here off. Cool, 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 cool. Thanks. Alright. So, all these bell housing bolts have been 18s so far, and the, and the two big starter bolts have been 18s. But, these little bolts along the bottom of it that are going to hold the uh, oil pan on, those are the 16s. And that's where I was saying that this 1816 wrench, I don't know if it was meant specifically for Volkswagen, Audi, VAG stuff, but it's a really convenient wrench to have, and it's plenty long. Um, the part number is RFX BLM 1618A, and it just, it, 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 it's the world of difference to have two of the most common sizes that you're messing with on the same wrench so that it's just a matter of flipping it back and forth a bunch rather than, you know, pulling a socket off, pulling a, pulling an extension off, putting another socket on and then back and forth. Something like this, it's just... I don't even remember when I got it, where I got it. I just, I just, I know that when, when I realized what it was and how useful it was, I absolutely loved it and couldn't get enough of it. Um, but we're also going to service this transmission while it's out or while it's off. I'm going to end up setting it on a bucket and let it drain its fluid out. Um, and I, so on Mark 3s when you pull transmissions, and it's also the same for, uh, well, I'd say Mark 1s, 2s, and 3s for the most part. When you go to pull a transmission, there's a, there's a, there's a, a way to do it where you have to pull the transmission off the engine a little bit. You got to get it off of the dowel pins, and then you, like, rotate the transmission into a different position. Excuse me? You rotate the transmission counterclockwise into a, into a different position, and then you could pull it off. Mark IV, at least on the VR, it looks like it's just a matter of pulling the bell housing bolts, getting everything where it needs to be loose, like this right here, the speed sensor. Go ahead and undo that clip. It's connected to the harness on the engine, so if I would have not noticed this beforehand, I would have 100%, uh, especially since I'm here alone, I would have I would have had this transmission in my hands trying to figure out how to get that loose so this is where that time comes in where I tell you just pay attention to what you're doing and it's it's actually not as hard to get this far as you think Whoop. tell I don't balance well so normally there's a bell housing bolt here that has already been taken out I think I took that out for something else there's this one here there's this one that's here that we've already removed and then there's one here that we've also already removed that leaves one on this back side right above the cv axle um but like i was saying it does seem like this transmission is just going to come right on off and and, and and be in my hands so i'm gonna I, I believe this to be the last bolt. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna kind of knee into it just a little bit so that if it if it decides to try to be stupid and fall, it doesn't. But I don't think it will. Got it away. But yeah, we're loose, and you see how much this wobbles me fucking with it. So. Okay, now we're loose from the dowels. And I say I'm going to pull it from the, the diff side, but I'm not. All right. Bam. I don't recommend grabbing that, but I, I grabbed it. Okay, so what is this? TYP... I don't, I guess I would have to Google that part number to see if there's actually a part number associated with it, but I'm not, I don't care that much about it. We got a new uh, Phoenix friction disc. It also looks like that starter's been hitting the teeth on this thing real hard too, so probably good that we're not messing with this one. 
The clutch disc inside of it though says it's a sax. So at the minimum, it's at least OEM quality, which is acceptable. I mean, sax makes a good product. If you're not pushing any kind, of, like if it's a stock motor, that's all you need. You don't need a stage two or stage five or fucking 20. You just need what, what, what the car needs to make it go. You know, all that extra shit wears out faster, especially when you don't drive it the way you're supposed to. If you put a stage five puck clutch in a car and you, you decide to daily drive it and you're not literally dumping the clutch every single time you take off, like the chatter that you would probably feel off that should be indicative that you're hurting it. So, you know, if you're not going balls to the wall, VR6 turbo, big turbo 180, don't waste the money on some stupid clutch that you don't need. OEM stuff's fine. So now, we need a 9mm 12-point socket. And I believe I have a handful of them. I just have to, have to find one. Here we go. And then I need my other little mini impact gun, which I think is in the back of the car. Should be. Now I just need the impact of adapter. Which I actually think I might have left in one of these box, one of these bags. I'm not sure. Forgive me everybody for being super duper unprepared this video. I don't know where my head's at. Yep, I know this is super entertaining. Thank you for standing by. All right, whatever. I've got an idea. Okay. Now remember, 9mm 12 point. Anything else, you'll strip these and it'll be a cunt to get them off. One. Two. Three. I don't know if y'all saw this start to release. I know the, the, the footage is great. I know the lighting is perfect. I should have turned this whole thing around, but if you watched part one, you kind of know why it was such a pain. Forgot to count them out, but there's six of these. Locator pins are stiff. All right. Well, I will say that actually looks like a relatively fresh clutch. There's lots of hot spots on the pressure plate, though, so maybe they were just good at preserving their clutch. We're going to sit this over here, though. So now that we're down to the flywheel, you'll notice we end up getting into these triple squares. So now I'm going to get my triple square.
So these are vector tools. Um, they're 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 good. They're okay. All right. So these are an M10, and I recommend firmly tape each tap each of these in until you hear that noise. Now I'm not sure if this little gun will get these. It might. Nope. So let's go get our smaller sockets. See if maybe the smaller socket will do it. M10. See if we can do this without the motor turning. It would seem not. Okay. Oh no, in an instant, we're not looking for tools anymore. Okay, well, what happened is, I can't find my adapter for half inch to three eighths or for my Milwaukee impact. So we've switched gears and we're gonna do the stuff on the on the on the the serpentine belt side of the motor like go ahead and clean this end piece up, pull that seal out, replace it with the new seal that we've got. So that way I can mount the main crank pulley on the motor and then use the Fablish or uh, Fabless manufacturing crank lock tool that I've got so that I can lock the crank on this side and then just use a, an extended 3 8 ratchet on the other side, which is the way I should have done it anyway, but I was trying to be quick and easy with the impact. But yeah, basically we're just going to try and get as much of this surface rust off as possible, get as much of this grease and dirt and dust as what we can out of the way, because when I open this motor up, I don't want any of this nastiness falling into the engine especially around the crankshaft where the bearings are going to be and oil will carry all this stuff all over the place. No, we don't want that. We don't want that. So get as much of this off as you can. And I've got a tiny bit of, you know, like 25% purple power and water. I just give it a good little spray down. But I just want to get as much of this rust off the crank as I can because even though it's not pitted or anything, the surface rust creates a, a rough surface. And what that does is it tries to tear the seal as it, as it goes on. Ow. This kid's is where they tell you to wear gloves, but I don't wear gloves because I'm a man. And I don't mean just, you know, penis. I mean, full dick swinging, Wild West Brody. I'm there. I don't go to the doctor. I rub tobacco on bee stings. I hit my kids. Well, I don't have any kids. So I hit my friends' kids when they mess up. That's a joke. I haven't had to hit any of my friends' kids. Okay, so we're we're back. As you can see, still haven't got the seal in. I did find it finally. But I also went ahead and got the flywheel off and uh, pulled that seal off camera. <clears throat> um, I ended up I ended up using my half inch with the uh, with the chrome adapter from half inch down to three eighths, and then doing that. And I mean, it literally zipped them right out. Was hardly any resistance whatsoever. As you can see, 
they were a big fan of blue Loctite. There's plenty of it in there, and that's why it didn't come off with the smaller impact. There's not supposed to be that much torque on those. Um, but anyway, I have the new seal. Um, we're going to go ahead and throw her in. And I got some Schaefer's Molly. And I'm going to just take a little finger dab. And let's get you set back up over here. Let's get this tilted back down. Yeah, that looks pretty good until I get my fat fingers in the way. All right, so I've got the seal. I've got the, uh, the Schaefer's. And so what I'm basically going to do is I'm just going to put a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit of grease and smear it around on the inside of the on the inside of the seal well inside of the seal for it to go in here and it's just it's just so that it it gets a little bit of love for us for a nice smooth transition um and the reason i'm using shavers is because it's it's a molly grease so it's really 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 slick and has great properties but if it mixes with the oil it it it, it, it won't really hurt anything at all so just a tiny little bit course be careful with this molly grease if, if this is what you're going to use uh this shit gets everywhere i'm i'm trying to figure out now in my mind how i'm going to refrain from getting it all over the place now that i've touched it but uh, hopefully i can spread enough of it out on this and we'll be fine but uh yeah the molly is just it's a good quality it's a good quality grease should get plenty of plenty of slickness i forget the word for it but basically you just want to get it it's hard to explain so like there's this lip in here and you want to just make sure that when this goes on it doesn't fold that lip back towards you and then as long as it doesn't it should just mate right up and then so there are there there are proper tools for how to do this but i'm gonna do it the, the wrong way with a 35 millimeter socket and I'm just gonna be really, really, really gentle and pay real close attention to how this thing's going in. Make sure, cause there's ribs, there's lines that go around the outside that you can actually pay attention to. And you can kind of see if you're getting cattywampus or not. And so the bottom is actually in a little more than the top. Yep, just a little bit. You notice I'm not beating on it. I'm just lightly love tapping it. If you have to beat on this thing that bad to get it in, stop what you're doing. You're hurting something. A little bit more. Basically, you just want to make sure that it's past this keyway area so that it has a full circular surface to seal on. And then just a little bit of depth. Like, just enough to like catch your fingernail on. But you want to be as even with it as you can. And this is where doing it like this with the socket's kind of a... It's something that you just you gotta you gotta be real careful you gotta use light taps because if you if you sink it too much there's no way to pull this back without damaging it so you just have to be real gentle with what you're doing and make tiny movements with the with the thing itself but once you've got what feels like a nice consistently smooth groove around and you've cleared this and I'll bring you over here. so you see that right there so these these seals if you look, see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Okay. So you see how there's an outer lip right there? And then there's an inner lip as well. This one was supposed to have a spring in it. That that came off and flew somewhere. I did check on the inside to make sure it wasn't in there. <coughs> but that's basically how you can install a seal 
without having some kind of seal installing tool. Um, I'm not going around that. I'm going to sit you over here. Yeah, look at that. Also pretty good at it. Now this one's going to be a little bit different. Because we got a... I don't have a socket big enough to soak up enough space. For it to for it to just go in that willy nilly. So what I need to do this time is I'm gonna have to use a punch, and so I'm gonna use a really big fat punch with a nice flat surface, and I'm gonna do basically the same thing. I'm gonna tap 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 until it goes in. But since we did it on the other side, we're gonna do it on this side. We're gonna take our rag, I'll spray a little bit of purple power onto it. And then we're just going to gently wipe this down. And we just want to make sure that it, while we were pulling the seal out, if we did any contaminants. And now this side, I probably should have brushed it off like I did on the other side, but it just seemed less bad as far as overall buildup of, 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 of gunk. Most of it's over here, over here. There's not a lot immediately around the top. There's very little over top, especially considering I'm not touching it. But the cool thing with this one is we get a we get a plastic uh, package. That's not the cool part. The cool part is the centerpiece. So pop this out real quick. It's hard to see on camera, but this thing has like a step ledge where it gets uh, a little a little wider out here. So basically, you stick it in just like they send it to you and then you sit that on the crank and then that lines it up and basically it creates like a the opposite of a piston ring effect where it where it instead of it trying to hold the piston rings in for it to go in the cylinder, this kind of spreads it open so that it goes onto the crank. But we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take a tiny touch of shavers and we're going to go around the surface edges so that we get just a tiny bit of lubrication so that everything just kind of glides right together and I'm looking at the chain from down here I don't see any any plastic chunks immediately and the bottom side of this guide looks pretty good the bottom side of that guide looks pretty good so I'm just gonna I'm gonna hope that my suspicions of this being a decent engine are correct if not, we'll be pulling it back out in a few weeks. <laughs> I hope not. I don't want to do this again. Uh, help me. But no, nah, Morgan's good people. I'm really glad he bought Old Greg for me. Um, Old Greg's Jetta front end conversion actually came from Morgan's Jetta way back in the day before Morgan had wrecked it. Uh, back when he first met his, his wife and started having babies. Uh, I miss that car. But... Yeah, Morgan Morgan was doing some stupid ye 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 yeedly dee shit and got a little rowdy and put it off the road and Oh, it was a bit of a mess, but anyway, now we're here and he at least got to you know, got to buy old Greg to try and keep some some of the memory of his original Jetta alive and of course he's he's buddies with me and Elliot and all of them and like we're all we're all car friends and and I guess you could say we're family. Okay. Cool. So in this case, I don't really have a I don't have an easy way or a good way to tell you how to do this one other than doing it the correct way and getting some kind of a seal pull seal installer. <laughs> I don't have that. So I'm gonna do it my way, which like I said, big old punch. We're just gonna gently. Of course that's not gonna cooperate. I'm gonna have to push her in. Get her started. Dang it! Oh, 
I'm pushing it in by hand. Nice and even. Doing the same thing. We're basically just going to go nice and nice and set, but like we're going to end up putting a little bit of a gap or a little bit of a lip. Right now we're just, we're actually keeping the chisel about halfway on the seal so that we stop at the flatness. You can hear when that ting ting happens. Basically, that means we've bedded it to as, to as deep as an even depth, which is based off of this lip right here. And you notice I'm not really scoring it up because, you know, I'm using a Strike Pro Dead Blow, which is soft. All right, so basically that's in. But what we're going to actually do, I'm going to clean this off just a touch now that we can... You can see this a little better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to center it now, but stay biased to the outer lip. We're basically going to send this in until there's just enough of a lip to catch the chisel trying to pull it off. What that'll do is that'll make sure that it's bedded into this outer plate, which is the timing cover. And I've decided I'm not going to pull the timing cover because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't buy a, uh, a valve cover. And I kind of talked to Morgan about buying a valve cover at some point, but we just, at this rate, we just kind of decided to send it. Nice. Okay, cool. So there's a good lip all the way around. I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. That's good stuff. I'll just wipe that off a little more time. I'll go ahead and put a little bit more purple power. Yeah, look at that. That's gorgeous. I mean, it's still a little rusty, but whatever. That's a rear main end. So. That's a front main and rear main, and in a nutshell, as you saw, with no specialty tools whatsoever, I got lucky and got them out, and got lucky and got them back in. But if you're gonna do it the way I'm trying to do it, do it this way and just be very gentle. Little little movements, same as the other side. Look at that, that's, that's good. That looks... <clears throat> just nice and solid. Oh gosh, uh, sometimes it surprised myself. Oh, dad grown, and I'm not even a dad. Uh. All right, so that's front seal in, rear seal in. So really, now that the rear seal's in, I can go ahead and I can go ahead and start putting the flywheel back together. But I'm gonna clean all the blue Loctite off those flywheel bolts so that I can freshen it up and do it again. All right, well, now that all the blue Loctite's off of it, I guess we can go ahead and maybe think about opening the clutch and see what kind of stuff we have to compare to what we pulled out. All right. Well, Morgan, this part's for you specifically. If you're a good friend and you've watched me working on your car on the Internet, this is me finally unboxing your damn clutch so that you can see what it looks like. piece of styrofoam some stuffs cool 
this is how many miles you need to break it in for before you decide that you're going to go jumping on it doing clutch jumps clutch drops and burnouts and all kinds of dumb shit aggressive shifting and stuff bam we might look at that later i doubt it clutch alignment tool and a little bit of spline grease that's awesome to see Brand new. Ooh, brand new. Man, I don't want to sit this on the ground. So I'm going to sit this right there. A little bit of styrofoam in there will be fine. That'll be fine. All right, don't ever touch the pads. Touch the center where it's metal, where shit doesn't have to depend on friction to make it work. But, man, look at that. That's fresh. There's no rattle to it whatsoever. Perfect. So we're going to set you here. in the flywheel. Now this one is a lightened flywheel. Oh yeah. Now I can't, I can't tell you if this flywheel was lightened or not. Mm. They look to be about the same dimensions, so it's possible that they are both light and flywheels, but I don't know. Either way, there's a fresh one here, so we're not going to have to, you know, wonder if if things are going to work the way they're supposed to. All right, so I'm going to pick this back up and move this back over here. I'm going to sit you guys right back there. Oh, look that way. All right, cool. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. I'm going to go try and find some Loctite. Okay, we're back. And we had another store trip because I did not have any thread locker. Uh, basically, you just want to wiggle this thing on there make sure it's nice and bedded. Shouldn't go anywhere, but get your thread locker, shake it up. You don't have to thread locker every bolt. What you do want to do is you want to just put a solid drop. Get you close. A drop. Don't go. Well, it's not going to focus, but whatever. Don't drop half a bottle on a single bolt. Do one single fucking drop and let that be. You don't have to do every single bolt. You can alternate if you want, but I'm gonna do every single bolt because it's not my car and if it falls apart, I'm responsible because I did it. So, I'm gonna do all of them. And then I'm gonna send these bitches in with the impact because what are torque specs for? I don't need none of that shit. Oh, it's not lined up. We're messing up. Yep. So there is a specific way that this lines up so that all of the holes are going to, it's basically a way for them to use the flywheel as a timing mark. Okay. Now it looks like we got somewhere. All right. Keep on trucking. Gonna go ahead and get all these ready so that I can just start banging them in. I like to start all these by hand. I said I'm gonna sync them with the uh, the impact, but if you take a couple of seconds and just make sure that all of these are threaded in a few threads by hand, it just ensures that you're not gonna cross thread and. These go directly into the crankshaft, and your crankshaft is really a big part of the process for how your engine works. So, I don't recommend damaging that. So, start everything by hand. Give it little bits of torque here and there. Oh, where'd that last bolt go? There we go. Oh, I missed one. I didn't clean this one. That's all right. This will just be the dirty one. Okay. Now that we're in, I'm gonna take this, go around, and just make sure that they're all started. As long as everything feels like it's threading in good, nice and freely. Even the dirty one that I forgot to clean, even that one's turning in really good. So we're gonna go ahead and switch to Titan. 
gently sink them, alternate. All right, so that should be bedded. Shouldn't be any wiggle to it now. Should be tight enough that it's, it's where it's gonna be. And I'm just gonna sink them. You can hear the gun bottom out and change its tone. This gun is good for 200, 250 foot-pounds of torque, give or take. I've seen this thing do a little more than that, I think. I haven't measured it. But all of these are now sank. And with the blue Loctite, one more. With the blue Loctite, I shouldn't have to worry about this coming back out. Now this isn't the right way to do it, but I've, I've used impacts on flywheels for years and it's just the way I do things. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but I know that's good because I've done this a hundred times. Um, uh, the next thing is going to be the clutch disc and flywheel. I mean pressure plate. Remember, don't touch any of the mating surfaces if you can help it. Get your, uh, get your locator pins figured out where they're going to set up. And then basically, well, the easiest way I think it's going to be to do it is just going to be to do it, do it, do it. So I think that's the tab I want. It was not the tab. Is the tab. Is not the tab. Mm. Again, they like to do these things in a way that they locate in a specific pattern and you just gotta get it right. Thankfully there's only like three positions this thing can go on at. There we go. Now we're there. Okay, so now we need that alignment tool, which is here. Don't forget your little bit of uh, stuffy stuff. But basically you're gonna stick this in there and you're going to jiggle it around and get that nice and centered up and that should stay and then you can come back with those six nine mils that you pulled earlier to get it all apart most of these screws bolts whatever you want to call them are uh, torque be yield so you only want to you only want to reuse them if you trust them and i've i've reused a thousand different flywheel and pressure plate bolts over the years I don't really see any problem with it when you're talking about stock cars, um, but again, alternate your pattern. Okay. So these ones, ah, you know what? We could have locked tight these two. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lock tight them. All this extra rework, rework for no reason. I'm gonna alternate this one. I'm just gonna do the three, because again, there's only six of these. As long as all goes well and this thing torques like it's meant to, it really shouldn't be a problem. Although, I think I might lock tight them all. Well, fuck it. Why not? We'll do it the way it's meant to be done. Squatting down makes my feet burn. Love it. 
groovy beats. Morgan, I hope you see all this bullshit that I'm doing for your car. go back around with my ratchet and just kind of see what these feel like by hand with a little bit of compression once it builds a little compression it'll Just trying to make sure they're super tight. The thread locker should do its thing and, and really keep it from going anywhere. But that's a clutch installed. So really at this point, the only thing I've got to do is I got to go ahead and clean inside of here out. Just get all this clutch dust out. But I got to pull this right here off. Yep, just like that. Oh no. The little lock is broken. All right, well, let's hope the one that comes out of old Greg's not broken. But I actually think that's where to put it. I set it down somewhere anyway. But yeah, we're going to cut here. I'm going to come back when I'm ready to do some more stuff. All right. All right, so we're back. It's the next day, actually. I uh, It's the next morning. This little piece right here, this little spring clip, if you look over here, when I pulled this out of this transmission, it broke. So we are here now. <clears throat> I had to go pull this off of a different transmission that I had laying around. Thankfully, it looks like it's going to hold just fine. Uh, I cleaned this up a little bit, just got most of the clutch dust off of it. Um, I'm going to use some of the Schaefer's, and I'm just going to put... I'm not really going to do what I did with the seals where I smear a little bit on my finger and then onto the seal. I'm actually just going to use like a hook or something and put like a nice little dollop down in here so that as the as the slave cylinder hits this part and it starts pushing back and forth and working in and out, it'll 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 hit a little bit of lubrication here so it'll help it just kind of glide nice and smooth. There was another pack of stuff that they that they sent me. Uh, I guess it I guess, I guess it ended up outside somewhere. I'll, I'll find it later. But there was a little bit of goo they gave me to go on the inside of the throwout baron. But now that I've got that clip, I can go ahead and drain the transmission, get it filled with fluid, and then start looking at actually getting it remounted back on the motor. And then uh, once the transmission is back on the motor, we're going to pull the car around to here, and then we're going we're gonna to start pulling the car apart. And hopefully by the end of, I'd say by the end of lunchtime, hopefully that motor will be out of the car and I'll be on my way stripping what I need off of it to go onto this so that that'll go in and just kind of work and do its thing. So, oh, I'll be back in a minute when I have some tools set up to drain the transmission. Okay, so you can see I've got this here table with the little drain pan set up in it. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure this wasn't what they had in mind when they made this table, but this is what I use it for. And surprisingly, it works really well. Um, so basically, I'm just going to uh, get the transmission up here. Don't be no little girl about it. I don't know if you can see it, but if... No, you can't see it. But there's a drain hole. I'm going to lift the transmission up takes a 17 millimeter Allen <clears throat> but basically right here goes right here go 
go ahead and take it out now so that way as I flip it back down it'll go ahead and start draining and I'm probably gonna let it drain for 20 or 30 minutes and then I'll manipulate it and move it around a little bit here and there uh, there we go and now I'm just gonna let it do its thing just gonna let it sit here and drain like I said 15 20 minutes and then I'll probably like tip the end up get all the fluid down here to go that way and then tip it the other way and roll it to get that in there um I don't really it's a little watery coming out um I don't know I don't think I see any metal I, I I I think it looks pretty clear it's just a little liquidy so we'll put the right stuff in it we're gonna go back in with some liquid molly uh, hopefully the liquid molly will go in it'll be exactly what it needs it should be like GLP or GPI or GPL or some whatever for GL4 something like that basically if you use GL5 or maybe the maybe I'm thinking of mark 3 but one of them if you use GL5 it's too slippery and it'll actually it'll cause the synchronizers and and the little meshy parts inside of the transmission to start slipping when they're not supposed to um, go ahead and tip this up just a little bit yeah look at that look at how much more we got out of there yeah yeah that's perfect so I'll sit like this for just a couple minutes and let you know just let gravity do its thing and, and and take as much of this this way as we can the idea is just so you don't if you're gonna put fresh fluid in it you might as well go ahead and put full fresh fluid in it you might as well not even try to try to worry about there being a little bit left if it takes you see where this starts to get dangerous if you take just a little bit of time to get stuff set up the way it should be all of this should come out relatively easy that thing just doesn't want to cooperate but the idea like I said is is to get everything you can out of it so that way when you go in with fresh it's truly fresh it's clean as it can possibly be without somehow taking this thing out or flushing it with some kind of cleaner I, I don't trust any kind of stuff like that a lot of those cleaners don't really they knock stuff loose and they don't necessarily dissolve all of the contaminants and particles so when it moves those particles around doesn't always get rid of them which means those things get in places they're not supposed to be start tearing up components that shouldn't shouldn't be anywhere near it okay so like i said i'm gonna let it sit for for a little bit heavy cougar Alright, so I'm going to let that sit for a little bit and just do the little drippy droppy. And again, I'll let it settle and I'll manipulate it and turn it up right again. But basically while it's sitting up here, let's, uh, let's move around. Oh, of course everything's going to be super dark. Well, this right here is that little nipple down there that I was talking about for that little dollop of Schaefer's on the on the on the shifter fork. I don't think it's a shifter fork in this application. I also found the little bit of goo they wanted me to use for the uh, for the for the throw out baron. But basically, you see, get out of the light so that you can see. See that big old dollop of grease? It's gonna go right here. Mm, just like that. And then this is the stuff they gave me, some kind of uh, ceramic goo. I assume that goes on the inside of here, so that's where I'm going to put it. Just get it on in there. 
hopefully it'll do exactly what it's supposed to do. I'm going to leave a little squeeze after I spread this out in the tube so that I can, I can put some on the actual input shaft sleeve itself that this rides on. I want to make sure that both surfaces are as good as they can be. And the idea is you don't want you don't want too much grease in this area because the clutch disc is not very far away from all this stuff. So when you're when you're when you're spinning stuff really quickly, it tends to fling. So if you get any grease on the pressure plate or the flywheel or on the input shaft itself, it could fling the grease into the clutch itself. And that's bad. That's bad. We are actually going to pop this thing back off though. Just pops right out and you can see where it's smushed in that little bit of grease. Now there's a little dollop purple and that thing's got some color to it. You want to make sure that the throw out bearing rides on these two flat surfaces like this. You got to get your orientation right. It's actually easier to do it this way from behind so that you can get it lined up. Takes a little bit of bam just like that. And now hopefully those two little metal hooks will hold it together. But now should be a matter of slide this on here very carefully. Try not to touch the input shaft. Good. Didn't touch the input shaft. <clears throat> now you see that nice and greased up. I'm going to wipe that lip of grease around the forward edge because theoretically that shouldn't Shouldn't be a thing, shouldn't come out that far. So yeah, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much throw out bearing in. Uh that's how to put one on the on the fork. That's how to, you know, do what little bit of service there is to it. Just make sure that you get plenty of grease in it. The idea is if you don't if you don't grease that center sleeve, the throw out bearing could ride real hard, which will ultimately give you some chatter. It'll it'll make it It'll make the pedal feel really bad and then the grease at the bottom just allows the thing to pivot freely you know and it'll it'll hold for years so here's hoping that this is going to be exactly what it does and another thing is you saw how small those hooks are on that throw out bear and holding it into that into that fork those hooks are not the craziest strong material known to man so like if you don't clean and then grease that input shaft sleeve the resistance of the throw out bearing going across that sleeve can wear out the throw out bearing and have those hooks actually bend and break away from the tuning fork and it can it can it can do some serious damage like you'll end up having to replace the throw out bearing and plop and possibly that that arm that that fork so go ahead and do it like this clean everything off make sure it's nice and then put it back together with fresh grease so I'm going to cut here, and once this thing sat for about 10-15 minutes, I'm going to shuffle some other stuff around. We're going to come back, and I'm going to show you how to fill this thing. It's easier to do outside of the car than it is inside of the car, so I'm going to take the opportunity while it's outside of the car. Okay, so I've let it drain. I've put the plug back in it. Um, typically, when it comes to filling these things, this plug right here, of course this one says ECS, uh, probably won't say this on yours. Um, this is your fill hole. When this transmission is mounted to the engine and that's in the car, what you're going to have is like a guaranteed level when the car is sitting still, like on a level flat surface. And so what you typically do is you pull this plug out and then you fill it from here. And what will happen is when it's full, it'll start to dribble back out and then you put the plug back in real quick, right? Well, I'm not going to do that because I haven't put the engine in the car yet. So the transmission's not in the car yet, clearly. And I'm going to fill it now. So what I'm going to do, there's two other ways to do this. One is if you look right here, this little black cap right there. You can pop this off. It just kind of comes out. And then there's a hole right there. Well, if you've got a, a nozzle, a little tip that'll fit in there, you can fill from here. It's, this, is the, this is the case vent where it off gases, basically. The oil gets hot, produces fumes, comes out of there. I am going to pop the steering gear out, or the, the speedo gear out because I want to look at it and make sure that it's good. I don't 
really remember ever getting to drive this car in enough of a capacity that I got to find out what was going on as far as the speedo is concerned. So to ensure that that's going to work, I'm going to go ahead and take it out now, and that's going to be my fill hole. So, like I said, we got Liquid Molly. So this one says GL4 Plus. I think this is because it's a Mark IV, so I told you wrong earlier. Mark IV can apparently take GL4 5. Um, but just to get it, gets it on the screen, that's what we're using. So basically, this gear, this, this Speedo sensor is plastic. So you want to be really, really, really careful when you loosen this up. Now typically I wouldn't pull this, but because I have it out of the car, it's really easy for me to do that. But you just break it loose, spin it out, and then gently lift. And that seems to be in good shape. So we're just gonna wipe it off, get all this grossness off of it so that, you know, when the fresh gear roll starts circulating, it can get all over this as well. And you just want to make sure that none of this gets damaged. You don't want to drop it. It is a fairly sensitive sensor. It works on magnets, I believe. As this thing spins a magnet up inside of the shaft somewhere in the sensor head, it, like, translates that into a speed. And it runs off the differential, so it updates. You know, regularly based off the, the diff speed, which is your axle to wheel speed. And sit that there. But basically now you just want to get yourself a funnel, drop your funnel in there and start filling it up. Um, I think these things take like 2.37 quarts or something like that. It was some weird number, but I always just go for two and a half. Uh, the reason I say two and a half is because it never hurts to have a tiny little bit of extra in there because these things do tend to leak around the CV seals and stuff like that. They never leak real bad unless it's broken, but like I've seen them dribble and seep fluid after a fresh rebuild 10,000 miles into it running. So as far as we're concerned, we're just going to put some put some two and a half quarts in it and call it a day. Now I got a funnel. And I got my little rag here, so I'm just going to wipe the funnel down real good, make sure that there's no no dirt or debris that's going to fall down into the transmission. <sighs> Transmissions aren't quite as sensitive as the insides of engines. There's no like pressurized oil circulation or, or fluid circulation on, on a manual trans typically. Um, I know that's not the case for every single manual transmission known to man, but for this particular one, there isn't. Um, this basically works with a fling setup. There's, a, there's a, 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 a gully in the bottom of the trans in the case that holds all the fluid when the transmission is sitting still. But at the appropriate fill level, the gear set is partially submerged in it. So when you throttle into it and start spinning stuff, it'll actually fling the oil around and it'll just kind of fling and drip and splash and do all kinds of stuff on the inside for it to lubricate itself. It's a very regular, normal way to do things. Um, I don't know, let's fill it up. You can tell these bottles have been here for a while. They got dust all over them. Again, I'm going to wipe all the dust off just because it's better to not be dumb and end up with unnecessary contamination. That's a goofy looking spout. Look at you, Liquid Molly. So apparently this is made in a way that you could have done this without the funnel. That's cool. So I'm just going to boop. And then I'm going to squeeze her on in. I think this is 1.06 quarts, so we'll probably only put like a third, maybe a little bit more than a third, close to a half a bottle on the final bottle. That way we're not quite too high. Um, I don't really care about the runoff. I like how this just kind of snaps right back in that's that's convenient thank you liquid molly those bottles are pretty spiffy if i'd have been doing this in the car i probably wouldn't have been that mad at you it would
would seem that if you pull this, get it up, and then snatch it up just a touch, it'll probably seal that bottom ring just a tiny bit better. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't see the drip this time coming out because it was dripping very slowly on the other bottle. So, give it a little. Oh no, nope, never mind. It dripped. I saw it drip. Probably because I'm not holding it. I'm putting pressure on it, and it's not a solid seal. It's just a cheap bottle seal. Man, at least the whole thing didn't just pop off on me or something. I, I'm fine with just a little bit of dripping, and I'm also not squeezing super hard either. I'm just kind of moderate pressure. This should be the last squeeze. Yeah. You know what? One more for good luck. The only thing I don't like about these bottles is that there's no window to see how much is left in the bottle. So you're you're you are 100% just kind of feeling the weight of it and then guessing about how much is in there and how much you you've poured in. Which I guess that could be a real pain in the ass if you're not careful. But like I said, this doesn't have to be some crazy exact science. You're just trying to get a good bit in there and I'm not going to I'm not going to pump it. What I'm going to do <sighs> spider. Right, I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that cuz I I squeezed the bottle down about halfway and like I said, I'm not going for full half. I'm not trying to do full perfect because these are a little more than one quart, so 1.06 is going to be 1.12 quart or 2.12 quarts. And if this thing only takes 0.3 or 2.3 or 2.4, so we're only we're only off by like 0.3 of a quart at that point. So about half of this should technically be like over over full. So we'll see. But it's liquid Molly, so I expect good things. And then you just get this down in here. Bam, spin it back around. Now this upper thing can spin and that's for being able to you know, position the harness when you need to. But I'm only gonna go back to about where it was before because I know it wasn't leaking before and this is plastic going into metal and I don't, I don't even care that it's aluminum and that aluminum is technically soft compared to steel. But what I care about is that plastic is even softer than that. Aluminum can go through plastic like butter when it's when it's enough force But basically that's transmission filled and really we're ready to go ahead and put the transmission on the motor um, I'm gonna look I'm gonna show you real quick. I Went ahead yesterday off camera just because I was trying to get the last little bits of stuff done I went ahead and pulled the power steering. I think I mentioned that earlier and I pulled the AC I also think I mentioned that, but just in case I didn't, I'm just recapping what we've done. Um, the front main seal is in. The rear main and clutch are on. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot going on up here on the top of the engine. Uh, a lot of these sensors, I'm going to take off the other motor. That motor, when it comes out. So, there's just... Uh, there's probably... There's probably going to be an end of part two soon. I think, I think I'm going to show you guys me putting this back on and putting some of the bolts in it to get it held on. And then, and then we're going to call part two and that'll be pretty much this engine ready aside from what I need off of that engine to make this work, which really shouldn't be that much either. But if you followed me this far and you've enjoyed what you've seen, please consider subscribing or leaving a like. I don't get any kind of traffic. Most of these videos get watched by a handful of my buddies, and I just, I really appreciate any support I get. I know these aren't really how-to videos, but again, they kind of are how-to videos because I did show you how to do the seals. I did show you how to mess with the transmission. So really, it's, 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 it's up to how you want to look at it, but please subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you thought. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like. I'm open book. I like knowing what my criticisms are just as well as what my praise is. So, come back for part three. We're going to go ahead and move this guy right here. Right here. And we're going to go ahead and jack him up, get the wheels off, start pulling them apart, get us ready to pull an engine. 
All right, well, until next time, thank you very much. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Have a good one. Have a safe... Well, it's Memorial Day weekend this weekend. I don't think this will get posted. So, just... I hope you were careful. <laughs> I hope you didn't drink and drive. I hope none of your friends drank and drive. I hope everybody made it home safe. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Good luck. Until the next video, thank you. Bye-bye.